the second episode of The Great British Sewing Bee, I've chosen two techniques to look at in a little more detail. The first one is the turned out tie belt, and the second is the matching of patterns. And for this, we're going to look at number one, a complex print by William Morris, and the second is an even window pane check on a piece of wool cashmere. Here's a prepared section for an inch and a half belt with a 45 degree angle point in. Your fabric is cut and folded right sides together and a half inch seam is sewn around the raw edges. A space is needed to turn the fabric right sides out, so here I've prepared a three inch break in the seam. A quarter inch stay stitch has been sewn on the single layers of fabric before the belt is folded and sewn. This keeps the fabric from stretching when the belt is turned and serves as a guide when you slip stitch the belt closed in the final finish. Before you sew the belt seam, prepare the point by first drawing in the extended seam line to the raw edge of the belt. When you sew the seam, stitch up close to the point and take a single stitch across the point to the other seam and finish the end of the belt. Now trim away the excess fabric. Now I'll come back to this in a minute. There's no exact rule, but I start with a straight cut across the point about two to three millimeters away and grade the sides, keeping that same two to three millimeter distance away from the point. Now separate the two layers of fabric at the fold and start your turning. I like to use a long straight pin to tuck in the end. Don't pinch the layers too tight, it leaves some room for the point to fall in. Once the point is inside, take any kind of a straight tool with a blunt end. Here I'm using a pencil as the eraser grips the cloth. Slowly coax the sides of the belt over the tool and work your way to the open section of the seam. Now pull the turned end of the belt through the opening, pull the fabric back and remove the tool. Now you can start to flatten out the belt. To do this, you need to concentrate on isolating the seam line of stitching. Roll the two layers of fabric against each other. This works quite well so that the seam line rolls out to the absolute edge. I like to use the point of my long straight pin because you can get right into the line of stitching and with a slight tug of the pin, you can coax out that flat shape. I'm working slowly here to show you how this is done. And it's the way I prefer to work on this kind of a technique because with patience, the results are always neat and they're accurate. While I'm working out this point, which takes a bit of time, I can talk a bit more about trimming the point. The amount you cut away depends on the weight and the stability of the weave in your fabric. With practice, you'll find out just how much trimming is needed. Cutting away too much will weaken the point area, and this can be a problem when turning out, or if you want to top stitch over the point area at the end. You can always reinforce the point with interlining, or you can use a fusible product to stabilize the point end. The other thing is you can use other tools for this technique, a crochet hook or a wooden point turner, whatever's most comfortable for you and whatever gives you the best results. And all of this comes from just trial and practice. Now give the finished end a light press without putting too much pressure on the point. So here you are. Why don't you practice making some samples, use different kinds of fabric and a variety of angled ends, and make this technique your own. So now having looked at the turned out tie belt, we're going to go from three dimensions to two with the matching of patterns, which some people might find a little complex, and we hope to clear up a few things. So we have our pattern laid out here. We've got our front and our back. The pattern's marked to show the dart, the waistline, the straight of grain, and the center front fold. These dotted lines, they indicate the halfway point in the width of the pattern. And in this case, it's a good idea to think about this area, the bust, and what you may or may not want to bring attention to here. The back pattern piece has the same markings. We see here the waistline, 
the Strait of Grain, and again, the indication of the center of this particular pattern piece. When you work with patterns, you have to think more about these areas and how the pattern will visually affect the finished look of the garment. To set this up, have a look at these sets of notches. These ones are at the hip, and they'll lay on the same horizontal line of your pattern. Here's a second set of notches here, two inches below the armhole. However, in this design, remember, we have a sloping horizontal dart, which will take away almost two inches of the pattern. You have to choose now whether to match the pattern either above or below the dart. Here's a third set of notches, and these are up at the shoulder, and this, these are gonna match the pattern vertically. Now the first thing I'm going to do is to check that the measurement of the side seams are the same length. So measuring from the underarm to the top of the dart, holding that measure, moving to the bottom of the dart, and then taking my value at the end of the hem. And now I'm going to check this measurement with the side seam of the back to make sure they match. The next thing to do is to decide where I want my center front line on the pattern to, to lie for the best visual effect and to fold the fabric on this line. In this case, the center will, will be where the tails of the two strawberry thieving birds meet. I've picked a second point on the print to check the fold is straight. And this will be this little flash of blue here in the design. So I check it on the fold and I'm gonna point it out again here. Here it is right here on the fabric that little flash of blue. Next, I wanna line up the hip notches again and check that these are level on the print. So you can see this uh, purple line that goes horizontally across the fabric. And in fact, both notches do fall on that same line. So we know that pattern is going to match. And finally, I go up to the shoulder here. I check that these notches are also in line because this is gonna match vertically. When the shoulders are sewn together, the color pattern is going to match. So you can see I'm picking out a certain flower here. One more thing to consider is how you might match another detail on the top of your garment, like say you wanted a pocket. And you can easily work this out by making a paper pattern out of some tracing paper. And once it's, the position is determined, trace out a few of the obvious motives and find these on a spare piece of fabric. Remember to include your seam allowances. So we trace our pair of culprits and see how straightforward this process is. So now you've seen a few techniques on matching patterns. In another video, I'm going to show you a technique that tells you how to match the top and the bottom layers of your fabric so that you're assured of symmetry when you cut out your garment, and another technique on how to cut your pattern one piece at a time. Here we're going to use the same simple pattern for our top with a one piece front and a two piece back. Here I'm using a pattern out of tracing paper with lighter construction lines so that the check of the cloth underneath is easier for you to see. Here I folded the cloth so that this yellow stripe of the check lies on the center front line. Make sure that your straight of grain lines are perfectly parallel to the dominant lines in the check. Here we have the same sloping horizontal bust start and the dashed lines that indicate the center of each pattern piece. This is just to help organize the visual effect of the finished look of the garment. Again, taking the dart into account we need to make sure that the side seams are equal in length. So we're gonna measure again to the top of the dart, pick up the tape measure, move that measure to the bottom of the dart and onward to the hem. And we're gonna check this measurement with the side seam of the back. In our last example, we decided that we we're gonna match the checks from below the start instead of the above 
as the, the upper area is more or less concealed by the arm. So we're gonna concentrate on this lower half, matching the check motif from the bottom of the dart to the hem. And the same with the back. The waistline, you see, is marked so that we can check the levels as it relates to this orange stripe in the check, about a half inch above the stripe. And then we can match this in the same way, at the same level, with the back. We now move up to the shoulder notch and use the same observation. The notch lies closer to the prominent black stripe and the shoulder point is close to the yellow stripe. So just work this out and pay attention to your seam allowances and you can kind of work out where exactly things are going to match. Once again, the center front of our top lies on this yellow stripe. And this is not a prominent line, and this is a good move to make. You don't want too many prominent lines in prominent places. As in our last example, if this were a jacket or other garment, and you wanted to add a style detail on top, you're going to use the same tracing paper aid. Let's say you want a pocket flap. In this case, it's straightforward to mark the main stripes here and it's easy to locate the same combination on another area of cloth. So we can locate the yellow line, the vertical line, the, and again, and mark it, Y for yellow. We have our orange line running horizontally, we mark that, and our darker prominent lines on either side of the center line of the pocket flap and their intersections. And now it's very simple to take this pattern piece and move it to another available area where you can cut this easily. So here we've got the yellow marked, the orange marked. We've got our prominent black lines and the intersection marked. Now, in another video, I'm going to talk more about the nap of the fabric and one-way designs in plaids and in checked fabrics. And again, how to match these on both layers of the fabric so you know your garment is going to come out symmetrical. So I hope you enjoyed exploring these two different techniques. And we all, I'm sure, look forward to the third episode of The Great British Sewing Bee. In the meantime, thanks very much for all your questions and comments.